All right. Welcome back to Angler's Trading Post. I'm Jeff, and today we're talking about just simple ways to use these 5D brushes, maybe a little bit of fly fur uh, for really quick flies. It's going to get you out catching fish. So we tie in at the back. We're going to grab the saltwater whip finisher. Really makes a nice finish at the back end. Makes that reach a lot easier. And boom, I'm locked in. My fly's not going to spin on me. All right, first thing in, I'm just going to throw in a quick tail. About a quarter inch by quarter inch cut. I'm gonna just pull out that little bit under for there. Tie in my tails however you like to tie in your tail. Fine with me. I like to do it up between the fingers, cinch it down, holds everything in position. Wrap forward, back in. It's locked in. Super simple. I'm going to wrap forward. I don't need to do anything with that body. It's going to be covered. These brushes make great shoulders. If you're tying larger flies like this, make sure you tie down onto the shank and then back into your materials. And that's for every material. Uh, that's going to keep it from being able to spin that locking up mechanism there. Now, these things, you don't have to take a lot of turns. You just kind of pull it out as you go, pull it back. We don't need a lot. That would be one turn. I'm going to do a two turn fly. A little bit more bulk right there. Tie that in. There we go. Please use your flush cutters, not your scissors on this. That's stainless steel in the middle. Don't want you ruining your beautiful tools. Pull that wire forward. Tie it in. Now, this is where the heavy bodkin comes in really handy. Kind of get that in there. Just dive it down in. Pull fibers is okay if you break some of them. But look at this. I mean, golly, we could fish that just as it is. That's really all you need. If you wanted some weight, you could put a cone in front of that, some dumbbells, anything you use to, to weight up your fly, get that down. That's going to hunt right there. We can go next level with this. Let's take it up just one little step. Um, let's put in a couple of wings and a collar. What do you say? We just dress it up a little bit more. We're never really satisfied. Okay, always throw in a whip finish with your fingers or your tools, whatever you like there. Now I'm going to throw in, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a couple wings on this thing. Again, really fine amounts. We don't need much. One patch of fly fur should tie you about 100 flies or jigs. I'm going to tie this in so that it flows back. Again, up between the fingers. Cinch it down. Get that hang kind of position. Get those fibers in. And I like to hold it at like a 45 degree. Tie that in. Doesn't take much. There's one. Again, kind of grab it in the middle. Just a small amount. You can tell I'm not, I'm not grabbing big big chunks. I don't want my fly fur and my materials. I don't want to overbuild them and I don't want them holding too much water when I go to recast them. This one I'm just tying in. Probably won't even notice a difference. Look at that. So I've just got wings. They're just kind of working like balances on either side. I could throw in a beard or anything I wanted here, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this thing a little belly. Kind of like tying in a beard. And I'm going to use this white barred black. Makes great belly material. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more flowing. And I'm going to do just a little bit more on this. And again, I'm going to pull out that under fur because I do not want that holding, again, all that much more water. Make sure that's all out. But we've got that variegation at the end of that. It's going to create a nice belly. And I'm just going to kind of figure out about where I want that to sit. Kind of put my fingers right there. See that? Come up. Tie back. Take my fingers. Cinch it down. Back and forth. Make sure that that's really where I want it. And 
then I'll just go ahead and cut these off. There we go. Tie that in. And we have saved all of that under fur as we went. So now we've got some wings, we've got that brush in there, and we'll create a nice shoulder, tail. Now we're just gonna go a little bit more advanced. Right here, we're gonna throw in a dubbing loop. Pretty simple. My favorite, my favorite way to do this is with the turbo whirler. Let's just put that in, come in, line up my tips. I don't need much. Just gonna kind of hide those finished thread wraps. Just give it a more finished look. Also going to help kind of push that water a little bit, create more movement. Okay. Look at that, just a professional looking finish on this with just a little bit of my leftover under fur used as dubbing. everything back, tie back in, just like that, and grab a whip finisher. Whoops. There we go. Just like that. Look at this, just a few minutes, and you've got a fly that has more layers and movement than you could do by putting all those materials in yourself. It's five materials that you don't have to go out and buy separately, and they all go in a couple of turns. Hope that gives you some ideas. Go out and catch the fish. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time at Angler's Trading Post.